Welcome, everybody, to Code Lab Live. Greetings, Tinker students and teachers. Welcome to Code Lab on Tinker Live. This is the show that helps students and teachers make and create with Tinker Code. I'm Mr. Rizak of Tinker, and welcomed by these very special guests, uh, Tinker specialists, Miss McGriff and Mr. Lockhart. How's everybody doing today? Doing great. Awesome. I am so excited. We have got a worldwide uh, um, audience today, uh, so I'm really excited. Um, I checked the viewer list. We've got folks from Mexico and Ontario and America and uh, somewhere in the UK that uh, <laughs> was it Wilkesfordshire or something like that. Um, yes, there's uh, there's folks uh, from Algeria, Malaysia. Uh, that is just a testament to how global Tinker is and how global Coding Cup is. Uh, so we're really excited to have everybody join us from all around the world for uh, for Code Lab today. Uh, we're going to take us. Uh, we're going to we're going to learn a lot. Uh, but we're going to. Uh, what are we going to see from um, from you, Miss McGriff, uh, today? What are we going to learn from you? We're going to customize our jerseys and design our characters. So you're going to show us how to customize our jerseys, jerseys, characters. Mr. Lockhart, how about yourself? What are we going to learn from you today? We are going to learn some strategies I use to be successful, and hopefully you can take those and move up the leaderboard. Awesome. And Mr. Lockhart, by the way, I know his team is like in the top 15 or something like that, which right now my team is in the 30,000th place. So uh, you've definitely got your, your ahead of me a little bit. Uh, so, so, uh, before we get there though, I'm going to be doing some, uh, just some, uh, um, some link sharing and some, uh, fun stuff. I want to make sure everybody has, uh, before we get started, I'm going to be running a global Kahoot for everybody so that we're going to have some fun, uh, on our partner page for Kahoot. But, uh, as we get started, uh, please share this out. Let everybody know who's going to be part of, um, uh, your activities today. We'd love to, we can welcome more as we're, uh, as we're live, uh, but bring in your personal learning network, share the joy of uh, coding cup uh, to your, uh, to your network. Today, we are going to be doing, of course, coding cup from Baiju's. Uh, it's just so exciting. This is, I mean, right now, world cup soccer is, is going on all around the world is the most exciting sporting event. And, uh, what better way to celebrate computer science education week than uh, doing what is most relevant right now uh, in the world. So uh, we have, will have, uh, we'll be answering your questions uh, throughout, uh, or I should say at the end of the, uh, uh, the uh, session here. So if we answer your question live on air, uh, then please, uh, um, you're going to win a Tinker t-shirt. We're going to make sure that everyone has, uh, who, if we answer your question live on air uh, and you get a Tinker t-shirt, I'll show you how to get that at the end of the session. Uh, but submit your questions now. Okay. Uh, that way we can, uh, we can prepare to answer those a little bit later. Uh, so also we want to make sure that folks who are watching, uh, um, we're going to be sh doing some shout outs to your team jerseys. So as you're answering those questions, if you know your team name, uh, we can do a little shout out. We'd love to see uh, your team jerseys. Uh, they're pretty exciting. So, um, all right. One more thing uh, before we get started. Stickers for everyone. We want to make sure that if you... Uh, um, are taking part today that uh, we reward you and your students for for taking part uh, and so we want to send you some tinker uh, stickers they look just like this they're so much fun change the world uh, we'll send you a classroom set I will show you how to do that uh, at the end of today's lesson so our lesson for today our, our agenda for today we are going to uh, find out we're just going to do a little quali qualification. What is Coding Cup? Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to do an amazing Kahoot when it comes to, and we'll talk about, is it soccer? Is it coding? Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, then we're going to talk about amazing teams with Miss McGriff, and, and she's going to show us how to make and customize your jerseys. Uh, and then we'll talk strategies with Mr. Lockhart, and we'll do our Q&A and hopefully hand out some uh, some Tinker swag for everybody. So, uh, so let's Get started and welcome everybody to Coding Cup. Welcome to the Baiju's Coding Cup. In this high octane multiplayer game, your virtual soccer team will battle against other teams to win. Choose and customize your team of three players. You'll need a goalie, 
a defender, and a striker for a complete team. Control your virtual team with code rather than a game controller. Follow the basic training path to code your players and build a team strategy. Train your team, compete globally, win prizes, and let Baiju's guide you to be a coding soccer champ. All right, so let me show everyone how to get started. There's a number of ways to get started with uh, with Coding Cup, but we want to make sure, we'll try to get you all on the same page uh, before we start our Kahoot, which is a lot of fun. Uh, but we are going to, uh, there's a few ways to do this. First, we're going to do is um, uh, you can go to go tinker slash cup sign in tinkers and teachers and uh, students. You can both do that. Um, I'm going to walk you through two other ways that uh, should be able to get you to the same place. Uh, but if you want to get all on the same page and get signed in to Coding Cup, uh, you can do the Start Now button, but you can't save your work if you don't uh, go to your classroom or uh, or sign in. So signing in, we're going to go to that Login button. At, you can go to tinker.com slash Coding Cup and log in directly right there. Uh, use your username and password. Use Google, however you like to sign in, however your teacher uh, helps you or makes you sign in. That would be the way to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're like a clever or a class thing school, you have another way to do that. But uh, you can also just go to tinker.com, click on the student and uh, log in there using the method of your choice. And when you when you get there, you can play right away or you can go to your classroom. Uh, so you should have your class if you've been invited to a uh, class and then it should be right there in your class. So we've kind of auto assigned it for everybody to make sure that uh, you have that. So. That is how to get started with Coding Cup. All right, so let us start our first activity, and that is Tinker on Kahoot. Uh, we're going to make sure that this is going to be a, a fun time. We're going to do a live Kahoot, a global Kahoot uh, for everybody to get you started. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and start things over on the Kahoot side of things, and, and uh, we, will get, uh, we will get everybody going here. All right, uh, let me... Share my screen. All right. We need some uh, fun music while I change my screen. Okay. Global Kahoot. Game pen is up there. Hopefully you've all done Kahoots before, but you can just go to kahoot.it on a mobile device or a new tab in your browser, and uh, you can all start joining our Kahoot. Uh, it's going to pick a name for you. This is the thing. You're going to have to write down that name so you know who's number one. All right. Uh, so uh, join our Kahoot. Um, I'm going to give everyone just a, uh, a little chance to, uh, to join. There we go. We got some teams. There we go. All right. We got a whole class, classes of students joining. Um, but again, make note of your team. Here we go. Make note of your team so that if you're in the leaderboard, you remember your, te your team name, right? All right, give everyone another, another minute here. Um, I feel like we need, uh, we need some banter while we do this. <laughs> this is awesome. By the way, I'm going to put this while you're adding this, teachers. I'm going to give you a uh, I'm going to give you a special um, place to go. Uh, I'm going to give you a resource, and I'm going to put it on screen while everyone's joining. Um, I'm going to put it in the comments section here. Uh, but teachers, while everyone's joining, I'm going to we have a whole bunch of cahoots. So I want to make sure that uh, uh, you have uh, are able to see uh, and go. If you go to go tinker slash play Kahoot, again, this is just for teachers. We've got about four or five on our um, on our Kahoot page. We are a partner with Kahoot. Uh, so make sure to uh, save those. You're going to want to do more of these Kahoots uh, later, I'm sure, uh, but save that. There's Hour of Code Cahoots, there's Broad Cahoots. Not all of them have to do with, uh, with um, Coding Cup, uh, but, uh, uh, but teachers save that link. That's a great one to have. Uh, and then of course, um, I've got another 
great resource for you uh, as well. While you're all waiting, we're going to wait just about 20 more seconds here. Um, you can start. Uh, uh, remember, we do have um, some additional hour of code activities. We're going to be doing Coding Cup today, but tinker.com slash Coding Cup. I'll make sure that link is there for you. I'm going to do the countdown. We're going to do about 10 seconds here, and then we got to get started, friends. So uh, glad to see we've got a pretty good number of uh, folks that are joining. Uh, but uh, we're going to get started with our Kahoot. Are you ready? All right. I think we're ready to go. All right. Um, okay. We're going to start this. And remember, to hopefully you wrote down your name, your team name. You're picking the soccer term in this Kahoot. So you're going to get, uh, basically, you're going to get shown a soccer term or a coding term. And uh, it's up to you to uh, pick the correct term. All right. Are you ready? S tip, fast fingers are going to get you higher points. So are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Question number one, which is the soccer term? Debugging or dribbling? You only have seven seconds. Got to do it. Fast fingers. Here we go. If you still want to get in the Kahoot, by the way, the pin is down on the bottom. Dribbling is a soccer term. Debugging is a coding term. All right. What do we have on top? Bright Fox, congratulations, you are on top. Uh, the others have some work to do, but it's, I'm gonna tell you, it's very close. This is gonna change quickly. Question number two, which is the soccer term? Offside or off by one? 13, 12. Here we go, we're almost there, five seconds, two. One. Oh, good work. We, I think we almost got everybody in there. Offside is a soccer term. Off by one is a coding term. Remember, if you the faster you answer for these, the, uh, the higher you'll go on the leaderboard. All right. Amazing otter. Good work. Which is the soccer term? Counterattack or cyber attack? 12 seconds. Nice. Almost. I think we almost got everyone in there. Uh-oh. Counterattack is a soccer term. Who's ahead? Cheerful Frog takes the lead, and 58 players are, players are on a streak. So nice. All right. Keeping it moving. Which is the soccer term? Overtime or downtime? What do we got here? 11, 10, 9. We're almost there. Overtime or downtime, which is the soccer term? You are correct. Overtime is a soccer term. Downtime is a coding term. Uh-oh, we lost our answer streak. Cheerful Frog is breaking away here. Uh, followed by Rockstar Pigeon and Amazing Leopard. Okay. Which is the soccer term? Yellow card or syntax error? Now, we use the word soccer, but it's also football if you're not from the United States. We understand that. All right. I think people are asking, answering pretty quickly here. So this uh, this looks like, yes, everyone understands. Yellow card, syntax error, that is a coding term. Ooh, Cheerful Frog remains on top. Amazing Leopard is in second. Smooth Lion, third. Okay. Shut out or shut down, which is the soccer term. I don't have all the uh, the audio. I'm getting all the uh, Kahoot audio on my ear here. All right, shut out or shut down. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this one's going to change the leaderboard. I know it. 
We've got, uh, no, Cheerful Frog still ahead. Aquatic Pigeon, though, jumps into second place. Uh, this is what happens um, and when they get a little bit more challenging. And we only have a couple more here. Soccer term, white hat or hat trick. Remember, your fast finger is uh, what gets you ahead. Four, three, two, one, and skipping. Uh-oh, hat trick is a soccer term. White hat is a coding term. Cheerful frog still ahead. Aquatic pinion, uh, pigeon still in second. We haven't moved much. Okay, friends, I think we're getting, we only have a couple more here, so uh, we could see some changes. Uh, conditioning or conditional logic, which is the soccer term. This is great. What do we got? What do we have? Four, three, two, one. Oh, we had a few joiners since uh, we started, but uh, conditioning, yes. If you are going to get ready for a soccer match, you are going to want to condition. Cheerful Frog, you're only ahead by, you know, 24 points there. So uh, anything can happen in this last question. So wh who is the soccer star? You have two people here, Virgil van Dyke or Guido van Rossum. One of these is a soccer star. This is where the game changes, I think. Uh-oh. When it's split like that, this is... Uh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, so just to remember, don't forget to go to tinker.com slash coding cup um, to play coding cup. But let us see who the leader is. Third place, Rockstar Pigeon. Congrats. Second place, Aquatic Pigeon. A lot of pigeons. And number one, who is it? Cheerful Frog. Congratulations. Good work, guys. Good work, everybody. Um, all right. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next segment. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody, for getting us started here. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and reshare my screen and uh, get us moving on to the next segment, which is going to be with Miss McGriff. All right. Next up on the list. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're checking on the leaderboard. Mr. Lockhart, can you give us a quick quick update on I, the global leaderboard? I can definitely do that. So let me go and add mine to the stream. So I'm going to go and start with the global leaderboard. Then we'll check on a couple of states. So as far as the global leaderboard goes, I think one of the most interesting things here is looking at countries because you can pick your countries um, right off the bat. And there's over 200 plus countries represented here. But as you look at some of the top teams, this has changed quite a bit uh, throughout the day. So it's definitely, um, you're able to kind of jump up there pretty quick if you kind of have the right strategies. Uh, but Meat Pie is up here at the top with the FIFA champs and Striking Blaze right below. Them. And then also, if you want to kind of see how this works with either your school or your friends, it's part of the leaderboard too. So if I click school over here, I can actually see um, in my school where I stand in my school. I can see that specific classroom. If I want to create a leaderboard with my friends, I can just give them the code and pop that code right in there. And you can build up that leaderboard with your friends. But as we look at a couple of states, um, let's start with California. And this team name really spoke to me when I saw it, the Rick Astleys are the top team in California right now from Rancho Del Rey Middle. Nice. Um, San Francisco football. So San Francisco uh, FC from Santa Clara Pomeray. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And you click over to Georgia. So the I fire Buckthorn Pep from Fulton Science Academy up there at the top. Nice. This and then is this, great. this grandiose Odomat. This is from, I know who this is. This is from our friend Linda Kurtz because that's her school, um, one mm -hmm. of her students. And then you jump over here to, say, New Jersey, like Cork FC from Upper Elementary School up there at the top. And I, this is a great team name, too. Always Ready from <laughs> Melamed Academy. 
And Perfect. last state to last state to kind of take a look at, looking at Texas from uh, the Stingy Camel Football Club, right up there at the top from Marine Manor Elementary, and is it Yes Yesleta? I hope so. Independent School District, and then Grand Canyons Football Club right below them. Awesome! Thank you so much for the update. That is awesome to see uh, so many uh, states getting involved. Um, Miss McGriff is going to take us through our next portion, which is how to make and create some amazing, uh, uh, some amazing teams. So we're going to hear some tips and tricks about how to craft the best and most perfect uh, team with Coding Cup. So take it away. Thank you so much, Mr. Rizak. Um, We are so excited to be able to decorate and customize our team jerseys and um, our characters. It's a lot of fun. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Share my screen here. All right. And so um, the first thing that I'm going to do is design my characters. And so I would like my characters to look like me and my colleagues, Mr. Rizak and Mr. Lockhart. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my team that way. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with my defender. And I'm going to choose the paint icon right at the bottom, right beneath her. And here it gives me tons of customization options. Now keep in mind that when you first start playing Coding Cup, you may not have that many customization options. We want you to get coding right away. But after you've been playing for a little while, then your customization options have increased and there are so many things that you can do to design your characters and your team jerseys. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this character to try to make this character look like me. So I'm going to change the skin tone. Then I'm going to change the nose. I'm going to make the eyes brown and I have short hair. So I'm going to look for some short hair here. And the head, I'm going to do like an angular chin. There we go. And so I think that looks a little bit like me. There we go. And now I'm going to make sure that I save my character by clicking save in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. And then I'm going to go and change this character to look like Mr. Rizak. And so we'll start with the skin. And then let's see, the nose. I think this would be a good nose. Eyes, blue eyes, right? And hair. I'm going to give him a spiky haircut. And we'll give him a pointed chin for the, for the chin. There we go. So we have Mr. Rizak. And now I'm going to go ahead and do Mr. Lockhart. And so once again, I'm clicking that paint icon at the bottom. And keep in mind, this magic icon here, if you click on that, it will design a character for you. So you don't have to do any designing. It just randomly chooses characteristics for your player and designs your character for you. So I'm going to go ahead and um, change this character to look like Mr. Lockhart. So we'll change the nose and we'll do the eyes, also blue eyes and hair. Mr. Lockhart does not have any hair. So we're going to choose one that does not. There we go. And the head, I'll give him a chin. And I have Mr. Lockhart here. So I'm going to save that. And now I have designed my characters. So I have my characters designed and I'm going to now design my jersey. And so there's so many ways that you can design a jersey. You can do it for yourself, for your team, for your school, um, however you would like to design it, or you can design it after a popular team jersey. I'm going to design mine after the Argentina 2022 World Cup away jersey. And so it has the Federation logo there and the Adidas logo. And so I'm going to design it after that. And I am going to, I see that the color looks about right, purple. It's like this purplish color, so that's good. And now I'm just gonna pop in and design my logo. And so we have options here. We can draw freely. There's a fill button, there's an erase button, and there's a draw shape button. So I'm gonna start by drawing a shape. I'm gonna draw a square for my Federation logo. And we'll draw one there. And now I'm going to draw freely.
and do a little star here. And then I'm going to draw my name. My initials. And then I'm going to do the Adidas logo here. And then once we do that, we'll call it a day. Now, I am not an artist by any means, but this is what it looks like. And so I am going to save that and we'll see how it looks on our teams. And you can see everything that we designed is on our team jerseys. It's on all of them. So we can play and see how it looks in a match. We're going to play it in a match. And we can see our team jerseys look good. They have their logos on. Our team is playing. And we have our character designs there. So they look good. Me, Mr. Rezac, and Mr. Lockhart are all playing in the game. Perfect. All right. So that is how we design our jerseys and our characters. Thank you so much. Uh, back to you, Mr. Rezac. Mr. Rezac, we can't hear you. I did that last time, didn't I? Um, we have so many creative Tinker students out there. So it's always so great. Uh, you know, the Tinker tools allow them to just be really creative, the, the drawing tools. I think we've updated some of our drawing tools too in the Tinker workshop. So great opportunity. But thank you so much for those uh, awesome tips. Now we're going to bring it over to uh, Mr. Lockhart, who has, I know, is has a team who's doing really well. Um, and uh, you're going to tell us a little bit how to how to help students uh, get in the leaderboard here. Are, are, is that true? I'm going to try to. Going to try to. <laughs> All right. We'll take it away. All right. So let's click over to my team and let's play a match first so you can kind of see and we can talk through some of the strategies that I use. As you look kind of at strategies here, I think one of the key kind of points, and you saw it right there, is can you get to the ball first? So I get to the ball, I get a quick goal right away. I think you'll also see that my striker and my defender, the two guys that are actually playing on the field, they are going to have very similar code. You can see it as you start to see it over their heads that that code is going to be very similar the entire time. And then as you look at the goalie, the goalie is always going to stay to the left. And you can see that I'm actually doing really well. We, let's play it to here so where we can see the goalie. Oh, the goalie didn't do exactly what I wanted to. It's The goalie's probably the toughest code, but you can see kind of as that plays out. And kind of some other keys in the game, if you want to play a lot, there are two places where you can speed up the pace. So if you click the X down here, you can speed up the pace, and you can actually fast forward a little bit. This is going to turn out to be a tie, is my guess. Yep, it's going to turn out to be a tie. So let's actually go and look at some of that code and look at some of the ways that we've actually designed um, our team to kind of play out. Um, as I jump into my code, and let me kind of up the size a little bit so you can see it a little better. I think really kind of my strategy is that I want the goalie to, and you can see I've played a little bit differently with the goalie. I want the goalie to stay back and play defense while the striker and the defender, their code is pretty similar. Their code is pretty similar because I want them to play both sides of the ball. And then I think as you structure these out, think of it in an order that makes sense, like prior prioritize certain skills. For instance, sprinting is always one that I'm going to prioritize right at the top. Um, and also kind of have some kind of bigger, if this, then, if this then that statement, some bigger conditionals to kind of organize everything under. As you look at the goalie, the goalie's code is pretty simple and pretty straightforward, basically saying that the first priority is that if he's got the ball, he's passing to a teammate. I want him to be the defense. And then if somebody's closer to him, then he's going to tackle. And then the next two are all about, can he get to the ball? And this conditional right here, this one that says can sprint, a really important one because if you don't, or this operator, excuse me, this operator right here that says can sprint, um, a really important one um, to use because if you don't have that in there, then what's going to end up happening is your guy's going to get tired. But if you have that in there, then you can actually have him just do it when he's ready. And so I think that's a really important one. And you'll see I always prioritize sprinting right up at the top. And then after the sprinting one, there's always a movement one. So there's always the, because they can't sprint all the time, but I still want them to be moving to the ball. And so that's the one that's here. 
And the thing about both of these operators, it kind of measures are is the goal is the defensive guy close. So that's what you see kind of here. And then the last kind of tricks with the goalie is that Tinker's a Y is a X Y axis. It's a coordinate plane. And so he's moving up and down. He's not going left to right. He's moving up and down in front of the goal based off of where the defender, based off of where the opponent is. Oh, and he's moving on that coordinate plane. And then if, he, if all else fails, he's moving to the left. So he wants to stay near his goal. And I've experimented with the goalie kind of being out in the field. You'll see some teams that are like that. And you can kind of see this is going to be the same code as my striker and my defender. Now, as I look at my defender, and again, I, we don't have to look at the striker because it's pretty identical code, is really this is three main kind of conditionals here. So there's one that's if I have the ball, there's one if the opponent has the ball and is close, and then there's one that's kind of my if all else fails code. The one where I have the ball, it prioritizes sprinting because you can see that if a kick can reach the opponent's goal and I can sprint, I'm going to sprint to the goal. I want to get to that goal as fast as I can get there. But using this so it doesn't show up being tired. And then if and once that sprint, if that's not true, I'm going to kick if I'm close. I'm going to kick and shoot if I'm close. I've seen where you can kick from midfield and kind of get the ball there, but it gets stopped a lot. So I always try to get my guys to kick close. And then basically saying that if you're not close, you're going to move to the goal. And then what I also have found is that people try to steal the ball from you a lot. And so this is kind of my answer to that, basically saying that if an opponent is close to the right, left, top, bottom, then I'm actually going to move away um, from that opponent. And then if all else fails, if uh, in none of those things up top are true, I'm going to move to the opponent's goal. I'm always trying to move to the opponent's goal. And if I don't have the ball, I want to move to the ball. Then my code, my conditional to look when the opponent is close um, and has the ball kind of focuses on like getting to him and taking it. So like there's the tackle, there's the sprint. Again, that sprint is kind of the priority there. And then covering and moving to the left because if the opponent has the ball, I always want to kind of go back towards my goal. And then kind of last but not least is that kind of um, that kind of last one, basically saying that if you can sprint, you're going to sprint. If you can tackle, you're going to tackle or move to the ball. And I think really, so having those conditionals, having those kind of main ones and prioritizing sprinting, prioritizing tackling, kind of the keys with your code. The other piece is that as you look at each of these, you can see it right here with the defender. There's a place to edit your skills. And so this is where you can do it kind of like Madden create a player, where you can do it where you can have sprinting, kicking, defense, tackling, and luck. And right here, I always prioritize sprinting, trying to move, move quicker, and then luck as well, because I think those are two. And this is one you can always constantly play with to do a little better. And so as we kind of come out here, come back out, let's see what this looks like in a match. I'm going to play a match. And you can kind of see how this plays out. Now, again, it's sped up so I can play more matches. So I'll slow it down a little bit. I got the ball really quickly, but whoever's code this is, I'm playing against the top team. So the goalie's really good. You can kind of see that, oh, he got the hit in the way. And so now I'm going to break away. So again, and you can see where it's saying sprint. It's sprinting fast. And it's trying to stay away from those opponents. He's going to kind of zigzag a little bit, scores the goal. I think you'll see it too as you break out here, hopefully when this guy's come back, you'll see that mine is always trying to get to the ball first because you can get those breakaway goals. And this is going to be that animation they've added, which I love. And then if you want to kind of do better, then you can speed up the pace and you can just play a lot because playing a lot is going to give you more wins. It's going to make you more successful. And so that's really the kind of strategies that i have um mr rezek if you have a question we can hold that off or ask now either way no i have one question and i think this is uh i think this is relevant to students who are, who are doing this and um i know it's, it may have been asked before but if you show the the edit team area where you're, you're looking at that um i think it's uh and this for a new coder especially doing conditionals they may think that starting at the top and going linearly, like this is the first thing I want them to do. This is the second thing. I think my question is, is that really 
how this works best? Or is it basically like we start on the bottom, like the bottom is where I want the absolute first things to do. And we kind of work our way backwards. How, uh, what is the logic uh, behind that? What is the best strategy there? So I, I think you can approach it a lot of different ways. And I think as you start to look at some of the really top teams, there's lots of different approaches. I think kind of the way that I've taken to be successful in it is to always up at the top, like one of the first ones is always either sprinting, shooting, or actually taking the ball from people. Cause those are the, like the main skills that you want to do. And then underneath it, you start to prioritize more of the movement type stuff, like moving away from an opponent or moving towards an opponent um, as well. Thank you. No, that's very helpful. And I just wanted to make sure students kind of understood that, you know, it's not like, it's, it's not always like set in stone that this is like, this is all going to work linearly the way, you know, from step yeah. one to step 10 or whatever, how, how we do that. Uh, but thank you. That's really helpful. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to move on to our next segment. Uh, we have a, some questions from the audience. Uh, so let me make sure I uh, go back to my fun little screen there. Questions of Tinker uh, and Miss McGriff, you can uh, join us here because uh, we were going to have some questions here. Um, but uh, question one, let's start. We have a we have a couple of questions. Uh, and remember, friends of of Code Lab, uh, if we read your question live on air, we're going to send you a Tinker T-shirt. We said that, so uh, I have a couple that uh, um, I want to make sure that we we do. But well, number one is training required to do a match. Uh, and um, how long does uh, this training take? So I think we I think we decided last time that you definitely have to do the basic training right off the bat. Um, and really, it's a good thing to do. It's going to give you some of the basic skills, how the game works, how to move around. But once you're done with that basic training, you can play a match. You can play. You can tweak your code and play a match. But I definitely highly recommend that strategy session because that's the one that's going to make you a lot more successful with some of the more complex things. Right. I think sometimes when you start the Coding Cup experience, students are already ready to play, right? Absolutely. Like, how do I get in that? And I want to play my friends. And uh, But you got to go through that basic uh, training first. All right. So we, have a, we do have a question from Georgia from STEM Academy. Uh, that question is, how long will Coding Cup last? <laughs> I guess I, I'll try to answer it a little bit. You can never say forever, but it's going to be there. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be part of Tinker. You can definitely play it, um, keep playing it. All right. Yeah, it's uh, it's part of the Hour of Code activities on Tinker. So uh, typically we kind of wrap those all together. So you can go to tinker.com slash hour of code and, and probably uh, experience that. Uh, a little bit later. Um, I have another question. It's not on my slide, but I do have a last minute question. Um, how long, and this isn't from, uh, it's from one of our uh, uh, Canada schools. Uh, how long will it take to get on the leaderboard? That's a really good question. I, I guess I, I'll take that one since I kind of moved up. From Goderick Honest Public School. Uh, uh in, uh, Honestly, it doesn't take long. It takes just some effort and having that more complex code. I'll tell you that Sunday night, I realized that I had an error in my code where I was passing too much and people were stealing the ball from me. It had backed me down to, I think, in the 1600s. Um, between Sunday and right now, I've gone, I'm in the top 20. And I've gone as far up, I think, as like 12th or even into the top 10. I think I was 10th yesterday. Nice. Um, and it's just a matter of playing it and playing it consistently and improving that code. And remember, your teams are still kind of playing when you're not there. So this isn't just students pressing the match button. But when you come back, you may have one have some wins and losses. Oh, um, uh, you, one yeah. more one more thing on that. Sure. And I just just because I just saw it is there's actually rounds going right now. The um, the next round starts in one day. So the leaderboard will actually reset in a day. Gotcha. Tomorrow, I think the leaderboard resets and everybody's back to zero. So absolutely, um, we are kind of running out of time, but I just wanted to see if maybe there was a uh, um, a Jersey shout out that we could do before uh, before we're done, because I do have to sh tell these these T-shirt winners how to get their T-shirts. Uh, Miss McGriff, do you uh, do you have anyone to highlight? Um, I 
I do have one team. Um, it's yeah. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Sure. And we have an awesome team from Georgia. Um, they're the Tin Man Trio. They did a great job. It's just a simple t-shirt. You don't have to go all out with your creations. You can make a nice color that you think goes for your team. And that's what they did here. So we have the Tin Man Trio from Georgia. Awesome. Good job, Tin Man Trio. All right, my friends, uh, let's get our t-shirt winners. Here's how to get your t-shirts for your class. Um, if you're Question was answered live on air. Just email uh, educator support at tinker.com. Subject line coding cup shirt. Question asked your school name. We'll match all these things up. Uh, it's got to come from a teacher account, by the way. So if we see Gmails and stuff like that, that won't work. Uh, if you want us to do a little shout out, uh, feel free to give us a Twitter handle. Um, so there's that. Um, stickers. If you want some, if you want a classroom set of stickers, uh, you got to use this form. By the way, you can just pause this video, use the QR code. You know, write down that uh, QR uh, that uh, URL right there, uh, so that you can get yourself a classroom set of stickers. Um, so that's how to do that. Uh, we love everybody and want to make sure that they have some great tinker swag. Uh, if you missed a show, um, you can always go back to this link right here, go tinker uh, uh, slash code lab live 22. We've got a nice playlist of stuff. Uh, we've got a show coming up later this week, Thursday, um, that uh, you might want to be part of. It is the Coding Cup with Lumio. So we're going to try a new, uh, um, this is one of our new partners. They create interactive lessons. So we're going to be doing our Baiju's Coding Cup uh, on an interactive lesson, uh, which I think you're going to really, really like. Uh, but uh, I do want to thank all of our global schools that are out there. I mean, we've got uh, Australia and Ontario and Canada and America and all everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining Code Lab today. That was a fun Kahoot. It was a great chance to uh, interact with everybody. Um, but to all the state board of eds out there that have been sharing Coding Cup. And uh, tomorrow is we start uh, the third round of Coding Cup. So if you are not on the leaderboard, you can all start over tomorrow uh, fresh and uh, get your teams ready. But a uh, big thanks, Mr. Lockhart, Ms. McGriff, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, for joining us for Code Lab Live. And uh, don't forget, let's create together at tinker.com. And we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you again.